Welcome back, everybody. This Week in America online at thisweekinamerica.us. Acclaimed author Matt Che is back with a new book, a compilation of three short stories, Judge Alvin Wong and the Mouse That Roared, plus Laura Town and the other short stories, and The World's Greatest Rock Star and other short stories. Many of these stories first appeared as e-books, now available in softcover. Despite 11 books, Matt still describes himself as a developing author, greatly inspired by the writings of Andy Griffith, He spotlights the common folk that small towns are made of. His writings reflect a strong sense of justice instilled in him throughout his childhood. He writes stories designed for both young and old, profiling the average person in society that's a little different or misunderstood. Matt was a union worker for 32 years. Those years and what he observed greatly influenced his writing, along with the support of his family and extended extended friends. Oh, one of the guests, uh, one of our favorite guests of the program is what I'm trying to say, Matt Shea. I'm excited because he's back with us. Matt Shea, back with us on the program. Matt, great to have you with us. Hey, Rick. Happy holiday to you, and Otto, everyone. Thank you, and happy holidays to you. So excited to have you back on the program in talking about the new book, and then we'll talk about some of the uh, the other writings. And when you told me this was book number 11, 11 uh, uh, what ebooks and seven in paperback? I couldn't believe it. And I thought we I think we've talked about most of those. Talk about this new compilation and how you put the, this together because you've got some of your best work all in one uh, all in one book. Well, including my daughter, I've had many people suggest that I take these ninety nine cent ebooks and put them in with a paperback, and this way my seven paperbacks will equal everything I have out there on Kindle and Nook. And so it was considerate, done, and it was actually a fun project because we got to throw in some more stories as well. It's pretty much like my first book, The Groundskeeper. I'm proud of that one. That got me on the map. That got me introduced to you, Rick. It, it so actually did, yes. Kind of, this is a different kind of groundskeeper. It starts off with the mouse that roared, and we all know that title. That's not my original title. That's a way back when movie but it's tacked on to a Judge Alvin Wong book, and this makes it different now, a small town setting. And so it's fun. We have, I think, over 20 stories altogether in this one. I mean, and you can get information at, uh, Matt's got several websites, mattsheabooks.com, and that's S-H-E-A, mattsheabooks.com. And you can link on, of course, directly to Matt's work by going to our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Talk about how you went about putting these stories together. It's a great combination and a lot of very strong messages in your stories. Well, I appreciate that very much. Uh, My brother, Paul, is incredible. And after the Groundskeeper book came out, he sat me down and played the role of the big brother. He said, why don't you get out some 99-cent candle and some free stuff? Well, I've always looked up to him in many ways. Plus, he's about 10 feet taller than I am. (laughs) But Paul is genius. The very book covers on this book, he did it himself. He did the Lordtown book cover and the Rockstar one. And then, of course, Renee does her share. But when he explained it all to me and laid it out for me, then I got my stories in there. And then my daughter, she says, Dad, have everything available one way or another. Get a paperback out there. Get these loose ends tied and get those 99 cent ones out there so now we could sit down and actually hold the book. And it was so much fun when you sent me a copy and I got a chance to open it and to, to have the book. And it's a big, I keep it on my desk. And of course, we have it out now as we're doing the program. If you watch the video version of the program, you'll see the, the book cover. Of course, you can see that by going to the website. We also have up all the books that you, that you have written. It's an impressive group of books. And I I'm sure what you've done with the latest compilation is what you've done with all of those. It's really inspirational, isn't it? There's a powerful message there. The the books are entertaining, but a very strong message as well. Well, most definitely. It goes back to my Andy Griffith following, my Andy Griffith, Andy of Mayberry Roots. It's all about it's okay to get by yourself and pray. It's all about it's okay to pull out that Bible and read it. It's okay to share it. It brings life, and it starts to call for you, that it starts to guide us as it's meant to in that. And when it's all said and done, we were meant to take that path. We just had to be pure enough to find it, strong enough to follow it. When you follow that path, people seem to follow you. 
And you make that point so dramatically in all of your books. Matt Shea, our guest on the program, you'll find uh, all the books we're talking about at Matt's website, mattsheabooks.com. Of course, if you go to thisweekinamerica.us, you'll be able to link on directly to Matt's website. You mentioned that first book, The Groundskeeper and Other Short Stories. How have you changed since then? Have you changed as a writer over the course of the, uh, uh, the 11 books? I most certainly have. And my daughter, once again, that's her favorite book because that's written by the same guy who read her bedtime stories every night. <laughs> she has seen me evolve as a writer, but this is going back to our early years. And so that one touches her especially like that. I have evolved. I think I have gotten more complex one way and then made it more simple another. I want each to offset the other to keep going straight with that simple message, the easy read. And as long as people don't have to pull out a dictionary or an encyclopedia, or I didn't even come close to being politically incorrect, we're on the right path. You know, you mentioned the simple message, but it's not that simple to convey that message, is it? It takes a lot of thought to take that simple message, put it into book form so that there's a, a story there, a cohesive story there, and entertains, and at the same time it has this, this message there, this subtle message. Most definitely, Rick. The people that have read my stories and made contact, they say I can relate to that character because that is a simple character going through everyday life that trials the up and downs like all of us. It's not a special person. It's a common person because we're all special. We're all in the same playing field. No totem pole here, no high society here. And so this is something we could relate to. We all seem to get a glass half empty at time, but when you look at one another in a different way, we're all watching each other go about the same battle. Talk about where you get ideas. When I read the books, it's like, wow, this is a really creative way to present the message. Where do you get the ideas from? My ideas came from the fact that I've had interaction my entire life. I'm 61 as you and I are speaking right now. I'm a youngster just like you, Rick. <laughs> but I have 61 years of just simple stuff, which is what I am, my family, the jobs I work. At present, I am driving a shuttle bus. I get a kick out of them. I'll drive them for different hotels. I'll drive them to the airport. Everybody is a good kind of God-given difference and we all have our insecurities we're all licking our wounds feeling our pain when i look at somebody they're just as flawed as i am and that's a good feeling you know it's interesting because and i think we talked about it before what you took some time off i think maybe even after you retired and drove a truck and just got out and watched and observed and absorbed the messages that you were receiving while you were out there that's really where you get a lot of ideas, isn't it? It's just from watching people and listening to, to the way they talk and their stories. Oh, yes. Now, when I was doing the American long-haul trucker thing, those guys were into the audio books, which is what our next project is. Uh -huh. We're going to start doing groups, get them audio books, and you better believe some free ones out there here and there. But I would sit down and watch these guys listen to stories about people just as simple and different as themselves. And we would all look at one another. We could relate. Nobody was king. Nobody was God, judge, and jury on someone. We have this simple life where we do simple things. And, of course, we make our, our mistakes. That's part of the package. And so just being able, uh, you watch, listen, and learn, it's half a dozen for six. With us on the program, Matt Shea, his newest just out there, and you can find information at, of course, Amazon. You'll find it at Matt's website. It's Judge Alvin Wong in The Mouse That Roared, plus Laura Town and other short stories, and The World's Greatest Rock Star and other st short stories. Matt Shea is the author. MattSheaBooks.com is where you'll find the information, and Shea is S-H-E-A. Go to our website this week at America.us and link on directly to Matt's website and, and get all of the information. What are you working on now? You mentioned the, the audiobooks. I'm sure you've got a couple of stories you're formulating, maybe even have already begun writing. What, what are you working on now? <laughs> I have crossed the halfway point right. of the rough draft on my next book, and it is 
called The Best Money Can Buy, and it is about adoption. It's about a kid who is adopted while going through adolescence, and his rich parents kind of buy him a bit. They buy him expensive toys, so it's kind of prestigious, but there's something funny with this picture. And then down the road, they realize that they never had to do that. And it's about somebody realizing that they were adopted for the right reasons. And he has to look away from the wealthy part of it and the family unit. And when he takes off those cataracts, those barriers, he sees it clear, and he's one fortunate child. Now, I am looking forward to that. Halfway through, how long before you think that will be published? I believe the entire package will be done, I'm going to call it this summer, and a friend of mine who looked at everything said, you'll be holding the paper back by September. So I'm going to put paint myself in a corner and say September at the very latest. See, it's now officially on record. September, we'll be doing a program and talking about the the latest book. Yeah, it's interesting, and you mentioned adoption. What, if I recall right, uh, didn't your family, your mother, took in a number of foster children as, as you were growing up? Yes, my mom is that Roman Catholic girl, and this, that, and the other way. She did what she could for children overseas and so forth. Mom was the person whose calling in life was to be giving, the open-door policy. And as I got, as I aged, it's amazing the people I run into, the first thing they do, they ask about my mom. That touch a person gives when they are giving, we remember that. It's a permanent thing. You know, it's interesting as we head into the holiday season, so many people have memories of household traditions, customs, that, that type of thing. What was Christmas like at, at the Shea household? Well, we had that Christmas tree in one room and then a Hanukkah bush in the other room, and then a nativity scene that Mom had made years ago. So in regards to properly doing the holiday, we covered every base and then some. And so about two weeks before December 25th, we were all decked out. It was kind of like an old house lit up, not lights on the outside, lights on the inside. It was the inside with the fireplace. And then we had a lot of snow in those days, which is pretty good for the Seattle area. And so when we weren't playing out the street in the snow, building snowmen, running sleds, we would be inside by the fireplace, marveling at the tree and eating some good chicken noodle soup that mom would make. Mom always had a pot of something that was just great. It touched the bone. Sounds like a great, uh, great Christmas memories that I'm sure each year making new memories with, uh, with you and the family. Uh, Well, definitely, because this Christmas, again, how fortunate, Mom and Dad still with us, 93, 96, we're having yet another one. And when I look at the ornaments on the trees, those are the same ones I had back in the 1960s. (laughs) I grew up with that. Nothing's changed. It's the same warmth. It's sort of like a throwback Christmas at the Shea House with everybody together, isn't it? That's exactly it. It, um... It's tradition. The tradition stays the same. It's like when you go on a vacation and you're so relieved, it's still rustic. It hasn't changed. It maintained the era that you come to know it through. When are, well, a few minutes left in the program, it always goes by so quickly. Who were some of the, the you mentioned Andy Griffith and the, the tremendous influence he had on your career. Who were some of the others along the way of growing up and maybe before you even thought about being a writer, but people, maybe maybe other writers who have influenced you along the way? Who were some of those that touched your life in a, in a positive, inspirational way? Bob Hope. I love that man so much. I loved how open he was because Bob Hope, I believe, was actually born in England. And he promoted yes. this country so very well. And he was very aggressive about being outspoken to our patriotism and to charities. He was nonstop that way. And so Bob Hope, my God, who can't marvel at that good man? Yes. You know, it's interesting as you watch some of the, uh, the old late-night commercials where they'll put together you know, TV show, highlights, that type of thing, and, of course, trying to sell those. But you're watching, and that's like 
maybe the most entertaining half hour on television anymore when you get to see some of the old clips and the uh, the overseas visits he made visiting the military that that type of thing it's just uh, it, it's so impressive when when you see that when i read your book books because it's not just uh, the, the compilation of short stories I'm impressed with the way you use dialogue and you move the story along using the dialogue. Talk about the challenges in doing that. It's one thing to have a great story idea, but then you have to tell that story and you have to tell that story through characters. Is, does that come easy to you or is that a challenge to, to put words in the mouth of these people to advance, advance the story? What I have learned from other writers is to make it simple and brisk. There's an old saying, somebody could ask you what time it is, and then you tell them how to build a watch. Yes. And so I actually step through it quick. They make their impact. It's very profound, and they maintain their distinct character, which is our character. It's us. But I don't have it go into too much of a monologue. I maintain the pace, the rhythm with it. You know, and that's so important because you can take one of Matt's books and, and sit down and read it, and it's a quick read. It's a very enjoyable read. Like he says, you don't need a dictionary there to figure out exactly what it is he's talking about. He gets right to the point. So many of the book covers have been designed by Renee, and I understand that she's there with you today. Uh, having a friend like that really has to help out when you're you're trying to show yourself creatively on the cover of a book, and you have somebody there who's exceptionally talented as an artist. Rick, I had just given Renee a Christmas card. She'll get several of them for me, as she always does. And I kept thanking her for being this godsend. And we look at the covers she's done and the new stuff she's going to do. Rick, she's right here. She's got to say Merry Christmas to you. I would love to. Love to. Hi there. Merry Christmas. Uh, Merry Christmas to you. I follow you on Facebook and just I so Im- so you. impressed with the, the creativeness oh. that you have, the talent that you have. What uh, is it under your name or under your business name on Facebook so other people could check it out as well? Well, mostly my, well, the, where, I, where I post my artwork is on Artistic Expressions by Renee Klaus and Expressions is spelled with a, just an X. So, uh, in last name, well, it's in the book. But anyway, I'm just learning. I've only been painting three years. I still have so much to learn, but it's always a challenge and fun to do. But the next book uh, for <laughs> Matt with adoption, I'm going to. I'm going to be thinking. <laughs> well, yes, and I, I can't wait to see what you come up with. And I just, I, I really am. <laughs> so you join the list of those that can't wait to see what Renee is going to do for the next book cover. The, you know, following you on Facebook is so much fun and following not only in your life and what you're doing and everybody's doing out in that part of the country, but with uh, with all of your paintings and just very, very talented. And I, I appreciate it. Uh, uh, being oh, able to do that and, so and having you uh, join us when when we talk with Matt, so Merry Christmas and, and all the yes. best in the and all the best in the new year. Yes, you too. And may Thank I you. say one thing about sure. Matt's writing? Yes, please. Um, he he does convey his message so clearly with his thoughts and the way he writes. Uh, he conveys the feeling and gives you the imagination he's going for. Uh, so well, so clearly, and um, it's fun to to see his analogies and the things he uses to yes. make his point. And you get to see firsthand, I would assume, the uh, the creative process as he goes about doing this. And you find out about the books before we do because you're doing the book cover. So you've got uh, a lot of advantages being out there, don't you? Uh, sometimes I do, especially the first few. Uh, he's He's improved enough. He doesn't need me much now. <laughs> <laughs> I hear him in the background. You'll, you'll, yes. <laughs> he'll, he will never not need you. So that uh, yeah. we well, enjoy we the sure book covers. And we look forward to, to what you're going to do with the next one. So thank you for being with us once again. And, and Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Thank you. And, uh, God bless. Thank you. Matt's got his own little, uh, you've, you've got your whole little office together out there, your whole creative staff, don't you? I do, and it is so much fun because Renee contributes far more than she realizes. We'll be talking about something, and she will say, well, shouldn't that type of character do something like this? 
<laughs> and then all of a sudden she moves me up another notch. And so just her freestyle talking, how candid she is, stepping right along, yes. You never know what you say to Matt. It may appear in the next book, so we'll be watching for that and looking forward. You're on the clock now. You've got till September for us to come back and, and talk about the new book on adoption. The, the latest book, the one that's already out there, Judge Alvin Wong in The Mouse That Roared, plus Laura Town and other short stories, and The World's Greatest Rock Star and other short stories. The author is Matt Shea, S-H-E-A, frequent guest on This Week in America. His website is mattsheabooks.com. And you can link on directly by going to our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Information there on all of the books. You can go to our archive at uh, thisweekinamerica.us videos and see all of them there. In fact, you'll see them on Matt's website as well and get information on all the books. Matt, it is always a pleasure. Look forward to having you with us on the program. Thank you so much for joining us. Happy holidays. We'll, uh, We'll stay in touch and definitely do it again when the new book is out. Rick, I would not trade you for all the tea in China. What a friend you are. And I love the whole family, Shannon, Kara, Sean, and, of course, Mr. Otto right there with you. And you're a pretty neat guy yourself. Well, Otto's back pushing all the buttons and making all of us look good, so we do appreciate that. Matt, always a pleasure. Happy holidays. Thank you for being with us on the program. Okay. And you'll find information on Matt's new book at our website, thisweekinamerica.us, directly at Matt's website, mattsheabooks.com. We're back on today's program after these messages. <laughs> 